Yeah, you can see it here. Uh, there's the vertical, there's the horizontal. There probably was more of a grid in the original work, but they go through layer and layer and layer of paint. And this is a process where, you know, sh she'll tell you there's a right brain and left brain in equal balance. And the left brain wants the grid. The right brain says, oh my gosh, that's creative depth. If you get trapped by the grid, you're going to get these rigid uh, constructions. So she's always, um, or the grid is involved, trying to dissemble it and break it apart. I notice a consistent use in your gestural work of vertical and horizontal forms. Why do you structure your work in this way? When I start my paintings, I just start putting paint down on the canvas in a very random way. I mean, I need something to respond to. So I get a lot of paint on the canvas and then I get shapes, lines, whatever, and then I start um, eliminating parts and getting aspects of the painting to relate to each other. It seems that in the process of doing this, I am creating order out of chaos. And I would say that my verticals and horizontals are a way of doing that. It's just the ultimate ordering, like grid system. Um, I really enjoy doing that and seeing the contrast of these sort of structuring elements against the, you know, what's left of these random gestural strokes and the confusion of the colors and the little bits and pieces that don't seem to make sense balanced against this kind of ordering device. So there's a point counterpoint going on. You know, I realized when I went back to Manhattan recently that, you know, the city is basically composed of vertical lines. You know, if you compare that to the West Coast, we have the horizon line here, and they don't have that in New York. So I, I kind of associate the horizon line with a very laid back feel, and I associate verticals with a lot of energy. So when I came back from New York, I didn't realize this, but I started putting a lot of verticals into my paintings, vertical lines. They just have so much energy, and then I realized it was those leftover impressions from being in New York. It just felt good to me. And the work of the viewer is to try and follow you through these different passages and places where you've been, leaving clues or codes or languages and then hiding others. The average gallery goer has had a hard time in understanding abstract art. Superficially, the content that they're looking for doesn't seem to be accessible, but it's actually there. How do you respond to that? You know, all of our past experiences kind of go into this internal reservoir called our subconscious. You know, they're stored there and often they just stay there. You know, we don't really think about them. But I find that as I'm painting, somehow these trace memories just seem to bubble to the surface and somehow end up on the canvas. So I think what we have here is in these, you know, what seem like random shapes and forms, they're really not that random. They're some type of encapsulation or outpicturing of these distant memories. I mean, maybe they're a year old, maybe they're a minute old, but I think that's what we see on the canvas with abstract art. Um, once I started painting really loosely like this, I found that people really responded to my paintings. And, you know, this is really getting into extreme metaphysical issues, but, um, you know, in some ways we dip down deep into our subconscious and we often go even beyond our, our own subconscious into the collective unconscious. And, you know, it's possible that we're pulling up from that level so that when a person responds to your painting, in some ways, I believe that it's that kind of universal unconscious that someone is connecting with, you know, just these elements that in some strange way, these experiences that we all have in common. I, there's no other explanation for it. Why do some people respond so deeply to a painting? There's a shared element there on some level.